Hey there everyone, this is Yui. Welcome to episode 5 of Antimatter Chemistry. Today I intend to finish chapter 2, but we'll see how that goes because there's still a bit left. So, let's get started. Before we get into all that, I'll get through some of the stuff I've been farming in between episodes. So if we check... Not there. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff set up. So... First, we'll go with these chests. So, you can make potatoes, starch, and potassium will get you potatoes. The only real reason I did that was for an extra source of potassium if I needed, but I set up a potato farm here in the back behind the carrots. But the other thing I did it for was because I made a chest of all the different foods I've been eating. So if you follow through with, at this point, these are most of, not probably not all of the things you can get. Because I believe you can break down the rotten flesh and turn it into different types of meat, get your fishes and stuff. But so if you just go through like the beetroot soup, the potato, the poison potato, there's even potato juice all the different types of juices some of the beginning stuff that they give you like, and bread this is just crafted with bread so but yeah so I'm up to uh, 25 different foods so far which gives me almost two full health bars so it adds up pretty quickly I did that with the potato you just make a simple juicer Stone and button. And then melons. Triglyceride and sucrose will get you melon seed. Pretty simple. I just did that for more boosted foods. We don't need that. Melon. Cocoa bean I did for the caffeine which gives you a decent source of nitrogen so I got caffeine from the loot crates and then I converted that into cocoa beans with just by crafting with cellulose and then I made a small little I planted them back here just to get a few extra so I could have a source of nitrogen which we'll be needing for this episode So that's that, that, and then a sponge, which I did not craft yet. That's this one. So a sponge, if you're not familiar with it for modded purposes, it is a good option for your Tinker's Construct tools in order to get Silk Touch. So there's two main ways of getting Silk Touch. One of them is your sponge, and the other is a silky gem uh, jewel, which needs an emerald and some gold and string. So, But using the silky jewel takes up a modifier slot, while putting on the binding does not. The only downside is, is if you put the binding on, your attack will drop to zero. You do no damage. But that's okay. I just wanted that for mining later because I looked ahead on the quests and it's going to want us to go into the deep dark. So continuing, oh, inventory, uh, we can go over, Grand is down there, um, I forget what Andesite was for. I used andesite to farm up calcium. That's right. The calcium which I used to make that sponge. Right here, you need calcium carbonate. So I made up a ton of andesite just by using the silicon dioxide. Broke it, turned it into polished andesite. Broke it down and then used the calcium to make the sponge. 
that's what that's for. Granite is used for the quest later, but that's the same silicon dioxide, just in a different spot. All right. Now that I believe that's everything. Yeah. Okay. Now we can move on. We'll take this stuff out. We'll leave that in there for now. Okay, so it wants us to get dandelions. Which, I already made a patch of grass over here. Hopefully four is enough, which it probably won't be. Because it's going to be mean like that. There's one. That's why I just brought some bones. So, you can find skeletons inside of the nether fortresses. But also, when I'm making my dirt, I don't know if it's converting the coarse dirt into dirt or digging it up, but one of those two steps gives uh, bones and a skull as well, which is how I got them in the first uh, episode. Well, let's see here. Now we got our dandelions. Use fertilizer on grass to get flowers, you know, we know that. Now we can make purple in our matter. So if you look at a dandelion, you can't do anything with that, but if you look at the yellow dye, we can break it down to get lead iodide. So we'll just craft one of these over. We'll break it down. And then if you look at this, you get your iodide, which is what is used to make the purple. I already have a bunch because I was farming beforehand. But there you go. That's how you make the purple. Oh, look at that. I got a red orchid. Now I need some redstone. Can we make that? Nope. Can we get it? Uh, I don't think so. That's alright. That'd be nice, but we'll see if it's in uh, the deep dark. I don't need any of that. Put that away. Done with that. Okay. So, polished andesite, or granite. That's just four granite. You know how to make that. I believe I made, a, I made a bunch of this stuff beforehand. So the yellow is just sulfur, which we got from the nether rack. Right here. Gives you a good chance at it. And then the purple we just saw. Granite, just the silicon dioxide, crafted in 2x2. Two two, you get your polished. That unlocks oh, more unique food. We'll just put one in there. Keep one on me. She will eat it now. And then yellow is done. This is done. Is this one? I'm not. Hmm. I've never actually used this outputs. Does it cook faster? No. Okay. That doesn't seem any better. That's fine. Okay. Uh, vanadium. You get this by breaking down the purple. Yep, the purple antimatter. So you just take purple, throw it in there, break it down, get your vanadium. Or you have some. Chromium, break down the yellow. Right here. I'll get you more sulfur so you can make more. That I also have. 
Okay, barrel. This is the more annoying one. So you have to break down your polished granite. No, am I lying? Oh wait. Yeah, it's uh. You need this, the beryllium, which is part that you get from the granite. You're gonna need more than a stack, so I needed what, like four stacks, roughly, to get the full. Uh oh, wait, you're gonna need more, more like twelve, twelve-ish stacks of granite. We'll get you the beryllium you need for this. And then just so that's just three, two, six silicon, eighteen oxygen. That'll get you one of them. The rest I have in here. That was just a lot of breaking down and remaking granite with the uh, silicon dioxide that comes after it. So all that is leading us to make the final tier cobblestone generator. More importantly, it's to make the emeralds here. Because if you notice, the parts it had you made for that are what we need for the emeralds. So let's go ahead and make that up. Should get us the last eight, and then pick up the... I went ahead and you need a 81 double compressed cobblestone for the next part so I just went ahead and made a few extra generators and put the uh, speedy hoppers on top so they would keep going there we go last one item duct and servo which I'll just put away for now don't need that There we go. Now we're producing more. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a lot of crafting and breaking stuff down for this. And then you have all these optional quests, which are where I was getting ahead of myself before. So I just went ahead, farmed them out. Fertilizer being the pain, because it's just... That's what I needed the nitrogen for. And... Yeah, that, that's not fun, that one. Melons, you can either get your silk touch with a sponge, or you can craft them three by three. All right, and that's all of these, which will get us. Oh, that satchel is very tempting. What are these other ones? Same thing. This one, yeah. My favorites are the slow fall, night vision, I don't like the knapsack because that conflicts with the slow fall. So we'll get slow fall, we'll get night vision, we'll get, I guess, how hard are these to make? Invar and bronze, so copper, tin, iron, and nickel. So this actually shouldn't be that hard. A satchel is... I'm going to take the storage space for now because we're going to go mining soon. That's almost everything. I'm not Actually, yeah, I will. Why not? Uh, no. Actually, yeah, I'll put it on. For now. So, these are the accessory slots. They'll use up a modifier. But they'll let you toggle on or off the effect that it has. So, if you put them on by default, it's nothing. 
Let's see, we'll go somewhere a little darker so you can see. Just a little, because I turned the brightness up. So, as you can see now, I turned the night vision on. So it'll take away the durability. And I put on the slow fall. So if we jump up, jump down, we'll slowly fall to the ground. But I'm going to turn them off for now because they will eat your durability up. So they're good to use after you max out the um, reinforcement modifiers. These guys, just eight of sitting and uh, a blank cast is probably the best to use for that. All right, now to clean up some of this junk. We'll keep that as backup food. All right, here's the other quest, uh, which is here. Make a hang glider. You can make leather just by using the protein you get, or you can fish or find animals. Uh, you can get chickens sometimes in the nether by the uh, jockey, the baby jockeys. Or you could just uh, do what I did and craft up protein into leather, which you can get from the rotten flesh. Oh, make sure you. Oh, uh, this mod doesn't matter, but there are there's other glider mods where you must make sure you differentiate the different types of wings, left to end, right. This one is fine, but otherwise you'll just make two of the same ones. This will help for traveling in the Nether. This will give you slow fall, but it also lets you kind of go far. Faster. It's, it's a mix between like slow fall and an elytra, I guess. I love them. They work well. Okay, deep dark portal. They don't tell you much about it. I don't remember if deep dark is. Uh, oh, that's quadruple. Okay. Well, we might not have enough for that yet. Let's see, what do we got? Uh, almost. Pretty close. Right, I put it up here. There we go, we're a little bit short. So I'll be back in a moment once we get enough cobblestone to continue. And we're back. It wasn't actually that long because it fills up pretty quick with all the different cobbles on there, all the generators. So now we just need to compress that, compress that one, and that should be it. I'll go put this over here. I'll put it there. Uh, for this portal, try to make sure that you leave... Just make sure it's above ground by one block. Because it'll... Um, it teleports you based off of your position. Actually, I think that one may have changed based off of whether you right click it or have to stand on top of it. So before we head over there, there was a few things I wanted to do. First thing is uh, I got an ender pearl by killing endermen inside of the nether. I found one and then just combine it with a blaze rod broken down into blaze powder. I guess a vacuum hopper a two stones and then any type of mob head in the middle will get you a player trap which is a trap that deals damage as if it were a player which is important because that means you can get player only drops then we're going to make a bunch of vector plates the only new thing here is slime 
lime you can make with protein and sucrose. So once again, just break down some of those rotten flesh and most, uh, oh, not too much, but a little bit is sugar cane. And then I have a little bit of wither dust from, is that not it? Um, oh, sugar. From when I was in the nether fortress. Pick up all the sugar, which is 24. Well, that's even better. That's more than I thought. Okay. I'm happy with that. Now we can make uh, fast vector plates. So they're just a little, a little better. Well, a lot better than the basic ones. So I want to set up a mob farm using that drop of evil that we got last episode, which is right here. So for this, I will just funnel. Make sure when you're on top of them, hold shift. Otherwise, you'll go flying like that. For these, I just like doing a simple in the corners, push them to the center. And the arrows go based off of the direction you are facing. And everywhere else, you can just push them up. I went ahead and you'll notice I put signposts there. That's just to prevent the spiders from climbing the wall. Otherwise they can get stuck up in the ceiling and they just sit there doing nothing. Wasting ticks. Then we'll put the vacuum hopper. Sometimes it's called the absorption hopper. Uh, for this Setting this up, we're not going to worry about collecting, actually no, we will I think. On this interface here, it's hard to tell which way you're looking at it, but when you first open it up, the face you see is the face that you're looking at. So you have to rotate it, in this case behind, I want the out items to output it in the back. And you can't see it from this direction, but... Let's put that down, head on out. We'll have some cobble here to close this up. On the other side, I have it. You can't see it too well. There it goes, uh, right there. It's pointing into the chest so you know it's working. Then I just have a couple speedy hoppers underneath just as a holding a little extra room. Uh, the slabs are here to prevent light from going inside because in the desktop version light does not pass through slabs. So then any items it pick up, picks up are just gonna get funneled down there. But before we go ahead and turn it on, I actually got a drum from one of the loot bags. I don't have, uh, actually I do, I think I will, since I have the stuff to upgrade it. I don't really want to waste that gold, but it holds a lot more, and then this one is just holds a ridiculous amount. It holds, what, 65,000 buckets? Not sure if I really need experience in this pack, but it doesn't hurt to have it. I'm just going to put it right here. But before I do, we'll output the experience to the side. The uh, container doesn't need to be there beforehand, so you can set it up first. So as you can see, the little yellow part sticking out there. 
That way when I put the drum here, any experience that collects will go straight into there. No, give that back. There we go. And that should be good to go. So also, if you didn't know, when you use a drop of evil, it turns all of the dirt or grass into cursed dirt. Cursed earth. So if we... This could be dangerous to do, but if you open it up, mobs can now spawn in there, even if you are close to it. Let's see, are they going to spawn? Let's see, there is a skeleton. But when you have, now it's getting noisy, but when you have Silk Touch, the block that you placed the Cursed Earth on, you can pick that one back up, and you can replant it somewhere else to spread it. But the rest of them you pick up with Silk Touch even, it, it won't do anything, so don't worry about them. If you need to ever move your mob farm, so you can. That's why I put a little sign there for the origin block. So that I know in the future if I want to move it. There we go. So now if we check. This is... We're going to get a ton of loot boxes. We already got some ender pearls so I'm going to have to sort out a better situation there. Because that's going to fill up super quick. I don't know if... Okay, I'll take some more torches. I don't remember if Deep Dark is the one that has the nasty thing that kills you when you're inside the low light level areas, so just in case, bring lots of torches with you. That's... no. That's done. Last part, Prismarine. So I took some of the Cobalt just a couple of them, which is probably too many, that I got from mining. I broke that down, made up these cobalt aluminite, illuminates, and then made a couple more of the barrels which were needed for that quest. So I can make prismarine. Ah, uh, except I didn't make enough. Maybe. There we go. Nope. No. Why? Why did I not math correctly? We need two more. Six of these. Need aluminum. Oxygen. Silicon. There. And there. Okay, four of these. One of my most favorite weapons in Tinker's Construct. You take four different knife blades. And you can make yourself a shuriken. So for now, I'm going with stone as an attack of three, cactus 3.4, which will help when I put it in my offhand with the sword. It'll replace my shield, which means when I get hit, that mob could almost get one shot just by hitting me. Prismarine, uh, you use for the jagged. And it has a decent attack off the bat. Uh, Jagged does, when you lower durability, it does more damage. And then Bone for the uh, Splintered or Fractured, whichever one is giving. Which means it just does more damage. It's not the best right off the bat. Uh, the Stone is the worst, but it's also the nicest for leveling, because it means you can use Stone Repair Kits to repair it. And I'm just going to put a diamond on it. It'll boost the damage. 
and it'll massively boost the ammo. And then I'll throw it on the ground, apparently. And you just put it in your offhand, and you can right-click it, and you'll throw them. And if you miss a target, you can go and pick it up. I recommend leveling it, and then putting on reinforcement modifiers. So, let's head to the deep dark to finish up chapter 2, and then we'll call it good. Oh, actually, I'm going to put all this junk away first. And we'll pull out a few torches, though the starting area will be pretty well lit up, so you don't have to worry about it. And here we go. It should be a decent mining dimension. I just need a, a block update. As you can see, we're way high up, so we're going to have to dig down when we get started. And then there's going to be a giant cavern layer where all the ores are going to be. So, well, with that, we're out of time. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.